One of the most iconic transitional fossil sequences known to paleontology and evolutionary biology is the evolution of horses who have one digit on the end of each foot from ancestors who had three digits or three toes on each foot. When I took a class at the Evergreen State College in the spring quarter of 2018 entitled Truth and Reason, taught by purported biologist Karen Hogan and physicist Alan Olson, we were taught that one of the ways you could tell evolution is true is because in modern animals, you can still see traces of their evolutionary ancestors. For example, in modern horses, you can still see the remnants of the three toes that fuse together to form the single toe that they have today. Well, <laughs> that, that is absolutely wrong. If we look at creatures like Eohippus and Heracotherium from 50 million years ago, we'll see that they actually have three toes on the hind legs and four toes on each of the four legs. Skip ahead about 15 million years to Mesohippus, and we see that it has exactly three toes on each of its four feet. Skip ahead another 20 million years to about 15 million years ago, and then we have Merichippus, a creature that had only one toe on each foot that actually made contact with the ground. It still had three toes on each foot, but the other two had been reduced. They'd become a lot more like dew claws. Then by about 8 million years ago, we have a creature called Pliohippus, which fully had one toe on each foot, the, the so-called dew claws, whatever you want to call them. They, they had reduced entirely. They were completely gone from the foot. So this is where you first see the, the three-toed foot completely disappear. And then, of course, by a million years ago, we have the modern genus Equus, which is horses, zebras, donkeys, and this is where you find the enlarged, I guess you would call it fingertip, the enlarged digit at the end of the foot that, uh, that makes up the modern hoof. At no point in the evolution of horses did the three toes ever, ever fuse together to form one large super toe. Two of the toes had already disappeared by the time of Pliohippus, and that, that was before the center toe enlarged to become the, the modern horse hoof that we know today. So the, the modern horse hoof is, is, is not three toes fused together into one super digit, okay? <laughs> That's just not the case. So where, where did my instructor get this idea that you could still tell in modern horses where the three toes had fused together to form one large super digit. Well, she was confusing horse evolution with another very iconic transitional fossil sequence, which is the evolution of birds. Birds have a, a modern, I guess you would call it appendage, like a, like a hand at the end of their wing that is actually fused together from the three claws of the theropod hand. And in fact, in um, Archaeopteryx lithographica, we can, we can see the transitional form, which is, is basically just an unfused version of a modern bird wing. And when you look at a modern bird wing, like when you look at, say, a roast chicken at the grocery store, you can still see that that digit at one time was made up of three claws that had fused together. Now this really bothered me because we're always giving the creationists crap about how they can't get their science right. And here we have a PhD scientist, supposedly, who is teaching a class called Truth and Reason that heavily focuses on evolutionary biology. I mean, our, our main source book for the class is Why Evolution is True by Jerry Coyne. Um, and our instructor, apparently couldn't even tell the difference between horses and chickens. I mean, that's, that's, there, there's no excuse for that. So of course I went to the internet, I printed out a bunch of information on horse evolution, 
and our very next class session, I confronted our teacher about it, and, and I asked her what was up, and she cited new research. She, she said there had been new research showing that the modern horse hoof had actually fused together from three toes. Now I've checked. There, there is no such new research. She was just blowing smoke. She was just trying to cover her rear end, which is, is so, so intellectually dishonest. I mean, not, not just to talk about horse evolution without actually knowing what you were talking about to begin with, but then, then to lie about it, to try and cover up your tracks. I, I mean, that's so dishonest. And in a class called Truth and Reason. Now because of this, and many, many other such incidents in which I had to correct our instructor on really basic things in evolutionary biology that anyone teaching a class on the subject should have known, things that I have known since I was a teenager when I was doing the creation and evolution thing as a hobby, after, after many, many such conversations like this, she saw fit to flunk me from the class. She only gave me half credit for the class, which is Evergreen's equivalent of failing. That's, that's a 50% grade. Then she had the audacity to accuse me of creationism. In her final evaluation of me, she said, he demonstrated an enthusiastic rejection of the evolutionary thinking that we studied. Which I suppose, strictly speaking, is true. I, I did reject what our instructor was telling us about evolution, but because she was completely wrong on a lot of points. And because I care a lot about evolution, not, not because I'm a creationist or because I'm against evolution, which is what she was trying to make it sound like. Anybody reading that evaluation would come away from it with the impression that I rejected evolution. After all, she's a biology instructor. If I reject the evolutionary thinking that she was teaching, then people are going to think that I'm the one who didn't know about evolution or that she was teaching the subject correctly and I just rejected it. So because I demonstrated that she didn't know what she was talking about when it came to horse evolution and many, many other subjects, she decided to be petty and make it look like I didn't know what I was talking about by accusing me of being a creationist. I mean, this, this was a character assassination that she carried out just to cover up the fact that she was teaching a class on evolution, yet knew virtually nothing about the subject matter whatsoever. Now, of course, I put in a complaint to the dean's office and I, I demanded my money back for the class. If, if they weren't going to bother to hire someone who actually knew something about the subject of evolution to teach a class on the subject, then yeah, they, they should have given me my money back for that. And I, I cited lots of examples in my complaint of her not knowing what she was talking about. And I demanded to see proof of her credentials proof that her PhD is real, proof that she's been keeping up on her continuing education, because, let's just face it, she'd said things in that class that no PhD scientist who knew about evolution would ever say. I got a letter back from uh, Lee Little at the Dean's office that said he found my complaint to be highly disturbing, assured me that both of the instructor's credentials were real, yet offered no proof at all, which, considering the kinds of things that the so-called biologist of the duo had been spewing about evolution, I, I think asking for proof of the instructor's credentials in this case was more than called for. Previously, I had asked Karen Hogan what the title of her doctoral dissertation was so that I could, I could check it out, I could look it up, I could see what kind of science she did. But she, uh, she blew me off, she changed the subject and she walked away. And now here, here were the, the Office of Academic Deans refusing to show me proof of her credentials. You know, that's more than a little suspicious. The email assured that both Karen Hogan and Alan Olson were qualified to teach the class, even though Karen Hogan had demonstrated, demonstrated that she was not qualified to teach on the subject of evolution. 
I was told that the dean's office had no authority to change the amount of credit that a student received for the class, even though I know for a fact that they have changed the amount of credit that other students have received for other classes. And, you know, I, I think demonstrating that you have more advanced knowledge of the subject that the class is about than the instructor does, you know, should, should entitle you to receive full credit for the class. Not to mention the fact that the only reason I didn't receive full credit in the first place is because I demonstrated that I knew more about the subject than the instructor did. Finally, in the last line of the email, Lee Little said that he was not qualified to dispute the factual information that I brought up, but that he did not believe it was relevant to my request for reimbursement. So apparently, the accuracy of the information you're being fed in a science class is completely irrelevant to whether or not you should have to pay for that class. So. My obligation as a student is not only to pay tuition, but to work hard to answer questions the way the instructor wants and, and to, you know, show up and, and do all the work and apply myself the best I can. But their only obligation in return is just to take the money. That, that's the system we're looking at. I pay the money, they take it, they are under no obligation whatsoever to look after the factual accuracy of the information being given in a science class. A science class. I tried explaining to them that the Evergreen State College is not a private institution. It is publicly funded, and this was not an art class. It is a science class. They absolutely are responsible for what they teach. You, you can't just let, say, um, an intelligent design proponent like Michael Behe stroll into a publicly funded institution and teach whatever he wants and call it science. You, you can't do that. You don't just have like complete perfect academic freedom to teach whatever you want when public funds are paying for it and to, and to call that science? Like no, they don't, they don't have that freedom. This isn't an art class. This isn't a private college. Karen Hogan threatened to report me to the school's disciplinary board if I didn't relent on the subject. Like seriously, she threatened to have me disciplined, maybe even kicked out of school, for sticking up for good science. Eventually, after going several rounds like this, Lee Little finally offered to intercede after I had threatened to sue over the untruthful statements about me in the evaluation. He, he offered to change the wording of the evaluation. No, no offer to reimburse me the money that the school stole from me to pay for this class. Um, no, no offer to give me full credit in a class where I demonstrated more knowledge of the subject than the instructor. You know, nothing, nothing. No, no offer to, to make up for any of the horrible things that, that they've done. They clearly weren't going to fire the teacher to try and prevent her from filling anyone else's heads with misinformation. And you know, that, that really bothers me too, because it, it wasn't just that she was ignorant about the subject matter, it's that her conduct was completely inappropriate. You know, it'd be one thing if it, if it were simply a matter of, of her knowledge of the subject of evolution not being where it should be. She could, she could take classes for that, you know? She could, she could update her information. The school could just suspend her temporarily to, to make sure that she got enough of her continuing education done. And, and that, that could have been it. You know, it, so it's not, it's not just her ignorance of the subject, it's also the, the horrible conduct. It's, it's the lies. It's trying to cover up her lack of knowledge with lies. You know, it was also her inappropriately dismissive and condescending attitude when she had showed not nearly enough knowledge of, of the subject to possibly justify such an attitude. In, in one of the notes that she, that she put in my final portfolio, she referred to me as a schmuck with a website. And last time I checked, name calling is not exactly considered proper conduct for a teacher. So please, 
If you hate bad science and pseudoscience, or if you believe that intellectual dishonesty is something that we should fight wherever we might find it, or if you just don't appreciate teachers misappropriating public funds to teach their own stupid little pet theories or whatever misinformation they have floating around in their heads as though it were real science, if any of these things bother you, then please, please write the Evergreen State College at 2700 Evergreen Parkway Drive, Olympia, Washington, zip code 98505. Please. Thank you.